Hi, I'm Deanna Springer with an informative Stitched Sisters episode featuring OESD stabilizers. First, let's introduce our Stitched Sisters guest, Carrie Coffey. She's Director of Marketing and Education for Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. Welcome to Stitched Sisters, Carrie. Thank you, Deanna. It's so great to be here today with Team NZP and the Stitched Sisters. I'm enjoying spending time with you and teaching you all about OESD Stabilizer. I can't wait to get started. First, let's take a look at the products we're showcasing today. Carrie has brought along an assortment of machine embroidery stabilizers, including cutaways, tearaways, washaways, and topping stabilizers. Plus, projects she stitched on her Bernina B790 Plus sewing machine. Let's start our Stabilizer Smart segment by sharing the OESD story, Carrie. Awesome. OESD, which is still based in Oklahoma, stands for Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. We've been the leader in home embroidery for over 30 years. We're an innovator of many popular embroidery techniques and styles, including freestanding lace, freestanding lace with applique, uh, with button and loop assembly, in the hoop projects, machine piecing and quilting, and hand stitch look embroidery. Carrie, your projects are so beautiful, and I know the foundation of each project is the stabilizer. It is. Stabilizer is so important, and choosing the right stabilizer ensures that you are going to get the best results for each project. The right stabilizer keeps the fabric from shifting and puckering during embroidery. It keeps the stitches looking great after embroidery by adding stability to the fabric. And best of all, you don't have to remember it all because we've created a wonderful PDF reference guide. And OESD has shared that printable PDF with us and you can print that right at stitchedsisters.com. It's a free download and it includes everything that you need to know about all of the OESD stabilizers. Yes, this is a great reference and it's available at stitchedsisters.com. You can get one at your local OESD retailer or on embroideryonline.com. Great resources and great education. Thank yeah. you for providing that. No problem. And so what happens if you don't use the right stabilizer for the project? Well, you can have some major issues. So one of the biggest things that we see is misalignment and puckering. And this is a great example. You can see here how the outline stitch of the embroidery doesn't match up with the fill. And that's due to not enough stabilizer. This is a pretty mm -hmm. dense design. So the, the middle of the cherry stitched first and it slowly pulled the fabric in so when that final stitch came around, that outside stitch, yep. it didn't line up anymore. Exactly. So what do we do to prevent that? Well, we're going to choose the correct stabilizer, which we'll talk all about how to choose the right stabilizer in a little bit. One of the other things that can happen is puckering. This is something we hear a lot about at our help desk. Um, you can see with this pig, it actually has no stabilizer behind it. Mm. We wanted to really show an extreme example of puckering around the edges of a design. A good example of what a stabilizer can do, because if you put the right stabilizer behind there, you eliminate that puckering. Yeah, and here is the finished project. You can see uh, how much better our little uh, pig, our pig is no longer puckered. Right. <laughs> a pucker-free piggy. A pucker-free piggy. <laughs> and last but not least, and this happens a lot with freestanding lace. Um, this is a great example. Let me move these out of the way here. Sure, we can move this over too. Yeah. This so, is a beautiful freestanding yes. lace. Well, it would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can see here with this freestanding mm -hmm. lace that the bottom of this design is mm -hmm. no longer connected to its body. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason for this is not enough stabilizer was used. Because freestanding lace is so dense, if you don't stabilize enough, the stitches will pull in, and when it goes to stitch mm -hmm. the last part, it won't be where it's supposed to be. And I can see it a little bit here, too. So we just needed a little bit more stabilizer yep. there. And you don't want to put all this work into it and get it almost finished and then have yes. it fail. And often you won't realize until mm. you're at the rinsing point, and then mm -hmm. you may think bad words in your head. Right. <laughs> you may lose your religion. Yeah. You might. Right. Um, so we can prevent that by uh, using the correct stabilizer, and we're going to talk to you about how to uh, figure that out. 
Let's start with the cutaway stabilizer. Okay. Cutaway was like the original stabilizer that we used yeah. when we were doing applique before automated machine embroidery. Yeah, the stabilizer has come a long way. And one of the things that's great is that OESD has really curated a selection of stabilizers to solve common machine embroidery problems. So we have four categories of stabilizer. So we, and we try to make it easy for you by uh, color coding the labels. I really like that. The red is cut away. Yep. The purple is tear away. Yep. And the blue is wash away. Yep. And then the yellow or orange is specialty. Specialty. Yep, which includes so, our toppers, which we'll mm -hmm. talk about. And there's more in the line than the four uh, go tos that we have on the board. You have more in the line for different applications, but a, not too many. A lot more, yes. So as technology has changed, as new products are available, we uh, add to the line and take away from the line to make sure that we have stabilizer for the right reasons, not just to have extra items right. to confuse you. Great. It's a great tool uh, kit to have different stabilizer within your stabilizer stash. Absolutely. So we were going to talk about cutaway first. As you said, that's yes. kind of the original uh, stabilizer that was available. Cutaway is used when you want something, uh, when you're going to launder something. So if you have something that's going to be laundered a lot, um, such as a garment, like I'm right, wearing like right now. Like the jacket you're wearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. or you used a cutaway for that. I did, mm -hmm. because when you're washing an item, you um, obviously the washing machine is going to be um, not so gentle. And I am not a fan of hand washing my clothing. Mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. like to throw it in there. Right, just wash and dry and That's go. right. Mm -hmm. uh, cutaway is going to keep your embroidery looking good long term. I don't know if you've ever had a t-shirt that you pulled over your head and you could hear the stitches mm -hmm. pop. Mm -hmm. um, having a cutaway stabilizer there is going to keep that That'll from... keep those stitches in place from, uh, you know, a t-shirt's a stretch, a jersey, a knit yep. top, and you want those stitches to stay in place. You put the work into making a beautiful garment or an embroidery on a garment, you want those stitches to stay in place. Yeah, we'd love it to stay mm -hmm. just like you take it off the mm -hmm. embroidery machine mm -hmm. uh, for long term. Right, so let's look at an example of a cutaway stabilizer that's stitched. So here's that knit shirt you talked about. Um, that's a stretchy shirt, so you'd want a stabilizer. Yes, so this is a, an example of something just to show you uh, removing cutaway. So this is a great design because there's also a big void in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you may think when you're removing the cutaway stabilizer that you'd want to cut away that stabilizer right. as well. Right, right. But you really don't because when this is washed, you wouldn't want that to be a different density than the embroidery because the center could mm -hmm. distort in a different right. way. So we have, let's get, show you how to cut that away. And you have your OSD scissor set. You're, you yes. have a, a set of stabilizers in your toolkit, and you also have a set of scissors and yeah, these um, are my tools favorite. to help you remove. And they're, yep. they're your favorite teal, too. I like that color. Yeah. So for when removing cutaway, you're just going to be careful to not cut your mm -hmm. project. It's all been there. Done and that. You're going to cut just about a quarter inch away from your embroidery. You don't have to get so close. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to get into all of the mm -hmm. uh, nooks and crannies. So right. you're just going to cut around the whole entire thing, leave stabilizer where... That's a great tip. I'd be tempted to cut it out. And, and if you did, and I have, I've tried, used to try to be so fussy and get it so close, but you've given us permission not to get so close. Yes. Plus we're leaving that there because, like you said, the fabric would... Uh, drape or behave differently right. and you don't you want that kind of a to pop in or out. Or right. An a or an uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want that. So that's a cutaway lesson and there's many different cutaways. Yep. Um, this is actually a poly mesh. Mm -hmm. um, so our OESD poly mesh, which is a soft drapeable uh, mesh type stabilizer, mm -hmm. uh, which is great for use on t-shirts or anything that's nice and soft. And that's what you used on the t-shirt the with the little dinosaur here. Exactly. Okay. Great. What if uh, we wanted to use a tearaway? Where do we use a tearaway? So tearaways are great when you don't want any stabilizer left on the back of your project. So, for example, you know the um, the tea towels that you have in your kitchen that are the the good tea towels, right? You know the ones that you the tell your you husband don't really to wipe not your hands use. on, right? Right. So those are often not laundered in the same way that a 
Mm -hmm. a workhorse mm -hmm. towel is. So you really just want them to be pretty. Right. <laughs> their, their job is to be pretty, pretty. exactly. Right. So you would have something like this and you would use a tearaway stabilizer on the back. You mm -hmm. don't want the back to have a big chunk of stabilizer on it. Right. So Boy, in, I can barely see it. I see it now that I yep. look for it. But. And we left a little bit on mm -hmm. there so you could see that. Mm -hmm. But this is actually a ultra clean and tear, which is a great stabilizer for if it is going to be laundered a little bit mm -hmm. because that'll soften as you wash it. All right. You were telling me about that as we were preparing for the show, and, and I didn't realize that there was a difference of softness. Uh, it, it actually has a completely different feel. Yeah, that's actually a great time. I'll, I'll explain really quickly about the different types of tearaways. Um, you may think to yourself, mm -hmm. we have two rolls of tearaway. I'll let you hold this one so mm -hmm. it doesn't go rolling down It'll the go hill. rolling down the board. <laughs> so this is here our um, stable stick tearaway. And it's going to be a little tricky mm -hmm. to um, see here, mm -hmm. but these are a pressure sensitive stabilizer, meaning they're sticky. There's a paper back that goes There's on There's two here. layers. Yep. So like almost like a freezer paper layer. Yep. And then uh, the, the actual stabilizer yep. layer. Yep. And when you tear them, they tear differently. Let's see if I can do this. I'll lay it out. I can even see from the original cut from the factory that it's a little bit fuzzy on the edge. So I have the fuzzier one. Yep. So Ultra Clean and Tear Plus is a pressure sensitive tear away stabilizer, exactly, and you can see the fibers are mm -hmm. fuzzy. What that does is when you launder it, it softens. So every time you wash it, the stabilizer is going to dissolve. Softer and softer and softer. Yep. The stable stick, which is this one, which is a crisper edge, and I actually have an example of this on a project. So Say this that little floral mm -hmm. design um, is done and we have it stitched, so this would be just with mm -hmm. the tearaway, mm -hmm. and this is actually um, the non-sticky version of what I just showed you, so mm -hmm. um, medium weight tearaway. A very classic tearaway. Yep, and this is a, a must-have. If you're going to have mm -hmm. something in your in your mm -hmm. tearaway library, uh, just a medium weight tearaway is great. It's a because great you can also layer two layers of mm -hmm. medium weight tearaway to make mm -hmm. a heavyweight. It's a, it's a versatile product. And the name implies you don't have to use a scissors to remove it. Just tear it away. So the tearing away process, you can see we started it for you here. It's really very simple. So the nice thing about tear away is it tells you how to remove it in the name. But remember that it says tear away, not tear into. So this is a tip um, that I always try and share. You don't want to pull your stabilizer up because what that's going to do is pull your stitches to sure. the back of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So you can distort the look of your embroidery and we want to keep that nice and flat. So you're going to tear it away, meaning you're tearing it away, away from your project, from the stitching. not up mm -hmm. and into the project. Because you could pull that, it'll pull the stitches towards the back or even right. the points of the, the petals yeah. could pull towards the back and we don't want that to we happen. We sure don't. Mm -hmm. So when this is complete, you can see on the back how mm -hmm. beautiful and clean that looks. You'd because never it, know there were sta was stabilizer under there. No, and the mm -hmm. medium weight tear away, actually mm -hmm. all medium, light, and heavy weight tear away, all tear away beautifully and crisply like this. Mm -hmm. The ultra clean and tear tear away is going to leave a little bit more fuzz, but as you launder it, that will disappear. It'll wash away. Yeah. Okay. Great tips. Thank you. Next, let's talk about wash away stabilizers. Okay, washaways are one of my favorite stabilizers because it's sort of like magic. If you don't want any stabilizer left on your project after embroidery, wash away is what you're going to use. Most people think about wash away stabilizer for freestanding lace mm -hmm. or freestanding applique. Right. This like, is exactly. This right. is a great example of freestanding lace. Uh, this is a beautiful doily. Uh, this is our autumn buildable doilies, and these are actually made. You can't quite see it, but made in panels and then stitched together. But this is done on our aqua mesh, which is our wash away stabilizer. And you can see how soft this is. Mm -hmm. Wash away stabilizers are made out of a starch. So the more you wash the item that you've used, the more starch will be removed. Washed away. Wash away, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the softer it will get. So if I want this crisper, I stop washing out the stabilizer sooner than later. Exactly. On our freestanding mm -hmm. teacup here, this is a freestanding applique, and you can see that it has fabric as well. It's assembled with our button and loop technique. This, you would just wash away the stabilizer so that you can't see it, but the remaining stabilizer 
acts as a starch to keep this nice end. It liquefies in the bowl of water when you're removing it, and then it really makes the whole bowl of water into liquid stabilizer then. So yes. you want to leave that so that you have a stand-up teacup. Yep, so we recommend rinsing uh, in warm running water. So uh, the warmer the water, the faster the starch will dissolve. Um, if you want it super, super crispy, you can use a bowl because the starch isn't going anywhere. Um, it's up to you when you can That's experiment. That's a good tip. Like you want to wash away more of it, I'll be under the, the warm tap water then at that point. Yep. Otherwise, you're in a bowl of stabilizer right, that it's not it, gonna, won't, it won't wash away. It sure won't. The other way you can use wash away stabilizer is for something that you really don't want stabilizer to be on the back. So a batiste or a tool, something sheer. This is a, one of those beautiful drapey uh, shawls that we all like to wear. Mm -hmm. And if the wind blows, you're going to see the opposite right. side of your Right. Scarf. And my sister, Denise, my machine embroidery sister, she'll make sure she looks at the back. So I want to make sure that that looks yep. as good on the back as the front. Exactly. So you used a wash away. Yes, we used our Aquamesh Plus, which is a sticky water soluble. You can stick the scarf to it, embroider, and then once you throw it in the wash, it is going to look just as good on the front as it does on the back, as it does the front. Right, the stitches remain, the stabilizer is rinsed away, mm -hmm. and then you still have the drape of yeah. those beautiful scarves that we like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the last thing is we have a category of specialty stabilizers, um, which includes our toppers. Mm -hmm. So toppers are a very useful part of our line, and it's something that people don't think about uh, until they have a problem, right. <laughs> and it's a great solution. Right, my first terry cloth towel that I machine embroidered when I first got my very first uh, um, embroidery machine, it happened to me. Yep, so mm -hmm. I, I guess I would imagine that what happened to you is all those little loops on the terry cloth mm -hmm. towel were poking through. They poked right through the design. Yep, so topper is gonna be something that can help prevent that. We have three toppers, um, the most the most used are our water soluble and our heat removable. So we have stitch 2O and heat to go. The Great name names. again Great tells names. you um, <laughs> how to remove them. But what they do is they help keep the loops of your item, though honestly I use it um, on wovens as well because it helps with all sorts of embroidery. But on a, wo on a terry cloth or a fleece item, it keeps the nap down mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have that poking through. For our Stitch 2O water soluble stabilizer, you would just lay it over the top of your project, embroider, and then remove the majority by hand. You can and tear most of it away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have these little intricate areas, mm -hmm. it, it's tough to get that out. Right. You could take a tweezers into those little areas, but then you, you could. could catch the terry loops. But you it's could. a wash away. Right. So the more you wash the item. Yep. As, you, as soon as you wash that, mm -hmm. that remainder is going to go away. Mm -hmm. But um, we, I mean, I love to make embroidery for gifts. That's the main thing I think that a lot of us right. do. Our we embroidery do. machines are. We love to are, embroider and give our gifts away. They're gift giving machines. Mm -hmm. yes. So you don't often want to wash your item mm -hmm. before you gift it. And I don't want to give it as an item with the stabilizer showing. Right. So you can be meticulous and remove <laughs> all of your wash away stabilizer, or if the item you're embroidering on can handle the heat of an iron, you can use our heat removable topper, which is heat to go. So that you would do the same exact thing. You'd remove the majority of it and then touch the remainder with the tip of your iron. It has to actually touch the stabilizer for it to disappear. So it needs the heat of a, an iron. Yep. So you want to make sure your project can handle the heat of an iron. Exactly. And it won't disappear in the dryer. It won't disappear with a hair dryer. Um, it actually <laughs> has to be touched with an iron. So that's something to know. And you can use the tip and kind of get in the, mm -hmm. the nooks and crannies. Always test. Yeah. Always test a sample. Yeah. You could always use another towel in yeah. your home. So yeah. I the have first a, one's for you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea because mm -hmm. then you get one for yourself. Right. We never make ourselves things. Right. And then you perfect the technique and the amount of stabilizer you're going to use or what type of yep. stabilizer you use. Exactly. So heat to go and stitch to out are our um, sort of most used toppers. But we also have a great product called Top Cover. And you and have probably had this problem mm -hmm. before. Yep, there's the unicorn. Yep. All stitched in place. But mm -hmm. <laughs> this unicorn's looking a little dirty. Mm -hmm. he's, <laughs> he's been rolling in, in the dirt, I think. <laughs> um, so we have a product called Top Cover. It comes in a variety of colors. And what it does is it actually goes over your embroidery. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we used white top cover. And it keeps the 
project the product from shadowing through to the front. So you can see it keeps uh, the unicorn nice and clean. At first glance, it looks like you changed the density of your stitches. Yeah, but no, you nothing actually, was done. You added a topper. Yep. So top cover, uh, the, the most important thing to remember is that it can only be removed by hand, manually. It doesn't mm -hmm. dissolve in water. Mm -hmm. It doesn't heat magic. You, right. know, it, you have to tear it away. So it's really not mm -hmm. great for something um, like the uh, the ass there with the, the swirly whirlies mm -hmm. uh, because it won't, you can't get it out of those little those nooks little, and crannies. Those little arrow areas, it will stay there. So it either will. live with it yeah. or, <laughs> or, or use it on use a solid. Use it when there's a solid design with a clear edge to the design and then it'll tear away easily. It'll be perforated with each stitch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, the top cover comes in a variety pack of colors. So you just pick the color that's closest to the majority mm -hmm. of your stitching. And then um, it will really make a difference if you are having shadow mm -hmm. through issues. It just covers that background fabric or in this instance, the terry uh, cloth towel. Yeah. And you yeah, have it makes a great a big design difference. and it, it keeps it standing up off the, the towel a little yep. bit too. And that's going to stay there permanently so mm -hmm. that won't ever change. Mm -hmm. So that's won't wash out or... top cover. Mm -hmm. So the three sta the three toppers we have are that heat to go, mm -hmm. stitch to o and top cover. Great. Those are great uh, topper uh, stabilizers to choose from. Yeah. And you've color coded them for us and you've provided that sheet, that yes. printable, the yes. stabilizer, a printable sheet that tells us everything we know. That is a great reference. So the OESD stabilizer uh, reference guide is available on your website, right? Stitchitsisters.com. Right. Uh, you can find this at your local OESD retailer or at embroideryonline.com along with all of these designs that we've talked about today and so much more stabilizer than we've had a chance to, to show. Right, and you can find all of that information on the websites you mentioned and at yep. stitchitsisters.com. Yeah. Well, Carrie, thank you for sharing your vast knowledge and your beautiful projects today. It's uh, been fun uh, working with you and learning from you and all of your great insights for making our next embroidery project a, a success. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a true pleasure to be here with Stitch It Sisters. We hope you've enjoyed this Stitch It Sisters episode. You'll find the Stabilizer Bundle Box along with the OESD Stabilizer Quick Reference Printable at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Benertex Fabrics, June Taylor, OESD Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design and shopnzp.com. Bernina, made to create.